All right, peoples, this is Ross. We're on the patio. I thought I'd update you guys on what is going on here because we've been bare rooting a lot of trees. And as you can see on the patio, there's very few fig trees. It looks, it doesn't even look like my patio, you know? I'm sure if you guys have been watching my videos long enough or even just my videos a month ago, this looks way different. Um, so I have a couple piles here I want to go through. I want to talk about what the patio is doing, why it looks so bare, because I'm, I'm moving away from growing fig trees in containers. I'm really sticking with the in-ground system that I sort of developed. And it's really, it's really making the, the potted tree situation here, growing figs in pots, pretty much an obsolete practice. And it's obsolete for me because this in-ground system here, this high dense in-ground system is so beneficial that it puts the, the potted trees to shame. It's, it really creates a lot less work. It saves me money. The trees are more productive in the ground. They produce about two weeks earlier. Um, I think that's actually a conservative estimate. And uh, I also will probably have less splitting because they're in the ground in a, a soil that is more consistent with its moisture. So there's a huge, huge number of benefits with this. It also, I mean, it saves me tons of time and I really broke this down in our last episode of Fruit Talk, just Wednesday night. Uh, we broke this down and some of the reasons, but just very quickly, it's, it's really quite simple. The methodology that we can use, and you guys can use this all the way down to zone four, you can do this. There's no reason why you can't do this. There's no reason why you should be growing figs in containers, in my opinion, um, if you have land to do so. In fact, I would argue that if you guys have land and you have the ability to plant a fruit tree in the ground, you should always choose growing it in the ground over growing it in a pot. Now, if it's something really tropical, maybe it's something like a fig and you can't get it through the winter time, then maybe that's the right way to go is to grow it in a pot. But really quickly, this method's so simple is that we cut them all back, right? Some of them are maybe 10 feet tall. My Smith was about 12, 13 feet tall. We cut that back already, but we're gonna cut them all back to six to 12 inches. So they're gonna be really close to the ground. They're not gonna be very high. And the beauty of growing figs, guys, is that the fig produces on the new growth. Assuming you're, you're worried about the main crop, all that fruit is formed on the new wood. Even if you cut the tree back to nothing, um, you leave a little bit of trunk, you're gonna get fruit the next year. So it's really important to realize that fact because when we cut them back, you can't really do this to other fruit trees. You know, this is a very fig specific thing, but when we cut them back, it then enables us to get them through the winter time a lot better. Uh, because what we can do is use a method called the cut and cover method. Where we cut them back, we're gonna get ourselves straw. Straw is very insulative. You can see I have piles of straw. I have about four bales. We're gonna put straw over top of this whole area, this whole area in the back. That's gonna really well insulate this, keep the ground warm, but you don't wanna just have straw on the ground and nothing else because the straw unfortunately can get wet because of rain. And if it just is too wet for too long, actually the straw is going to rot the bark on your fig trees. So straw is good and bad in that sense. But what we can do is actually throw over top of the straw is tarps. And you could put, um, really cheap, efficient tarps right over top. You can get them in pretty long lengths. I have a, a tarp that is, I think, 12. This is six feet wide by 20. So it's 12 by 20 and I can double layer this tarp because I only need to cover six feet. And then I put things that are really heavy, like this is a bag of rocks and we have stones and these stones and things weigh the tarp down, keep it from blowing away. And this gets my trees through the winter time um, perfectly with no damage. Uh, they, they're 
really, it's just a, a beautiful way of protecting figs in a very dense area. Um, and it just doesn't take a whole lot of time. Now, what I do actually in the spring, once I've reached a specific time in the spring, for me, that is March, March 1st. Usually we don't have a high chance of frost at that point. Um, it's starting to get a lot warmer outside. It's, it's unlikely we're gonna see by March 15th, probably something around 25 degrees or lower than 25 degrees. So for me, I, I think that's probably the key there is that 25 degree mark. And at that point, we're just heading straight towards spring. So what I do at March 1st is I actually set up my low tunnels and you can go back and see what these low tunnels looked like this spring. I had them up for 45 days, but this year I'm gonna have them up for 90. And essentially I'm gonna be giving these trees a 90 day head start, which is insane, guys. So because they're so low, I'm able to then set up low tunnels, which are very cost efficient. Anyone can construct them. They're very easy to put up. They're very easy to take down. Um, it's a no brainer. And I have videos on how to make them. I have videos on common questions. I have so many videos on the, the low tunnels now at this point that it really um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense for you guys to not use them. I really do believe, and I actually have some over here. We had like 40 mile an hour winds, so some of them here have come off. I haven't had a chance to fix this, but this is what they look like, these low tunnels, except they're gonna be three feet at the highest point and six feet wide. These are, um, I think, only maybe two feet high at the highest point. So maybe 18 inches or something, but anyway. Point is, is that this is doable in any climate. You know, just because you're in zone four doesn't mean you can't get your fig trees through the wintertime if they're in the ground. All you have to do is insulate the soil. And I'm using straw and I'm using tarps. You don't have to use those materials. There are so many other materials. You can get yourself um, even just insulation that you might use in your house, like in your attic or something, right? Um, put that down. Then you can get yourself even some concrete blankets. And those are quite expensive, but maybe you might know a guy or have access to something really heavy duty, some other material that might be better to use than some of the things I've listed. And they might be more insulative. If we can insulate the ground, keep the ground warm, these fig trees get through the wintertime no problem. And people always worry about frost. They always worry about the ground freezing. You know, as long as the roots of these figs don't get below 15, you're good. That's really not that difficult to do if you have the whole area insulated because the ground, the earth is a heat source, guys. Just like your house, you have a heater in your house, it's cold, right? But if you had a heater and you had no insulation in your house, it'd be very inefficient. Well, that's exactly what the ground is. It's very inefficient. So if you can make the ground efficient, make your heater efficient and cover these guys, it makes these uh, fig trees here very obsolete. And uh, let me talk now about these, these containers here on the patio, what our plans are, how many we're even gonna have. Cause actually I counted, um, if you can just picture this in your mind, this is seven trees right here. Some of them are actually rootstock, but take those seven there, take these trees right here. This is um, 14 in total. These are 14 fig trees. Plus we've got over here, I think I counted 11. There's nine pomegranates and two dejubes. Plus I have four citrus trees in the house or overwintering now in the house. So I'm only gonna have 29 large potted fig trees and some of these guys now and I mean by large I should say is they're in a 10 gallon size pot or a 15 gallon size pot these right here are going right in the ground these are I'm gonna have to plant in the ground I'm gonna dig up roughly 10 or so and plant roughly 20 of them because I really do value this whole system of having them in the ground 
um, moving away from these container fig trees um, to have less work. It's more, it's, I mean, there's so many reasons, guys. I've mentioned this a hundred times. But what's interesting I should mention about these trees is that some of them are grafted. There's some grafts there, and I don't necessarily care because um, with this method of protecting them, as I mentioned, it's very easy to insulate these trees and even insulate them to the point where I can keep those graft unions alive. Anything above the graft union, I should be able to keep alive. So we're gonna have to bury some of these guys maybe a little bit deeper um, to be able to protect them a bit easier, but that's what we're gonna do. Even trees that are grafted are going in the ground of varieties that I choose, I've, I have chosen to be, um, you know, really good choices here in this climate. Uh, we have actually three trees here that we haven't sold yet. If you're interested, we have a bunch of trees that we sold guys on Figbid that we bare rooted. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about that. These are three we haven't bare rooted because we haven't sold them yet. And then these over here are trees that are getting picked up uh, locally. So those are going to be, those have been sold to local people. And then what kind of leaves whatever's left on the patio is the experimental five gallon size trees. These are small trees that are not even one year old. And I think that's really I, what I would kind of just say is gonna be the main purpose of growing figs in containers is to try them out in the smaller size. They're easy to manage, easy to lift, easy to feed uh, in the smaller size, easy to maintain. Um, that if I want to do experimental varieties, like I will constantly keep trying new and new varieties, this is how I'm going to do it. And if I think that they're worthy, then they might go into a larger pot, unlikely, but instead they'll probably go in the ground. And um, so that's, I think that's kind of it. And I, I really have only have one other situation, I think, that I can think of for these potted trees which are trees that I think I must grow in a pot, that I think are varieties that are really exceptional. Like uh, this tree right here is Smith. This is another Smith right here. And I love this variety so much, but believe it or not, it's just not doing all that well in my little system I have here in the ground. It's just too dense. I think Smith doesn't like being pruned all the way down to six to 12 inches. So certain varieties will like that more than others. And, and um, definitely Smith is a little bit finicky in that sense, in terms of its light penetration requirements, its pruning requirements. So for me, I'm, I'm uh, saying this is probably one of the other reasons why I would continue growing figs in a pot is that I really love Smith. And if I want to ripen Smith here in this climate, it's probably best to grow it in a pot unless I can probably get it somewhere established where I don't have to prune it all that much and I can wrap the tree. Otherwise, I imagine it just probably won't work out here all that well. Um, and maybe there's other varieties like that um, that I'm not thinking of or don't know about yet. I, I would like to do some more grafting this year we're gonna do probably some Hative de Argentil grafts. I have some rootstock here set aside to do some grafts. Maybe we'll do a couple Verdino del Nord grafts, a couple, uh, maybe Ishea Black UC Davis grafts. I have just a couple rootstock here set aside. And that's kind of just will be it, I think. And if you if, remember when I counted all these trees in total, there was only 29. So it really isn't going to come out that far in terms of how many trees I have here on the patio. There's going to be so much more space, so much more room, and um, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain. So for me, those are the reasons I think growing figs in containers are obsolete. I hope you guys will try the methods I've mentioned. We'll see everybody soon. Hit that subscribe button for me. Share this video check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody for the next one, all right? Take care.